I started taking railroad photos in 1930. I've taken about 47,000, 40 some thousand. And so uh, my father was an engineer for 52 years. My grandfather was a conductor uh, working out of Livingston in 1894. And I, uh, I went to work uh, in 1936 and worked through until 1975 uh, on the railroad. I had a son, but he got killed early in life, so I don't know whether he'd end up on the railroad or not, but I, I think I probably would have favored him if he wa had wanted to. Oh, it was, it was very important to me to show the type of country that uh, uh, Northern Pacific trains uh, or any other railroad trains uh, operated through. Uh, did you stop taking as many photos after the diesels came in? Oh yes, I quit. Uh, I quit. Uh, the diesels are not near as as uh, romantic as a steam locomotive. They don't talk the same language either. Well, when I was a young beginning photographer, well, the, the heroes that we worshipped were Ronald Nixon in Missoula and Warren McGee in Livingston because uh, uh, almost seemed like almost every issue of Trains Magazine or Railroad Magazine or the Locomotive Engineers Journal, whether it would be a picture of an NP train or an NP engine, it would be uh, credit line Ronald Nixon or Warren McGee. So I w worked as a crew caller call boy in the summer of 1943 and then was time to go back to school in September. Well, I quit two weeks before I was due to go back to school and got on the train and went to Missoula where Ronald Nixon was working as a dispatcher. And I met him and he took me around a little bit and showed me a few things. And then I went to Livingston and uh, Tried to find Warren McGee, but unfortunately he was somewhere over around Guadalcanal in the Pacific uh, fighting the war. So I wasn't able to meet him until a year or two after the war was over and he was back. But uh, they, they were such highly respected and well-known photographers of the NP that anybody that was trying to get started um, would search them out. Uh, just to become acquainted and worship at their feet. <laughs> Warren was a conductor in the Rocky Mountain Division at Livingston. I had the privilege of uh, working at Livingston at Road Foreman while Warren was still in service as a conductor. He was on the North Coast Limited. He would come up in the Vista Domes running between Livingston and uh, Butte which was an afternoon run, as I recall, and he would, he would hold forth on the geology and the history of Montana and uh, aspects of the railroad to the passengers in the Vista Dome. And there were people who would have their travel agents schedule their run on the North Coast Limited to have Warren as their conductor if they could because they, they would like to hear a repeat performance. He did a wonderful job. And, and so I picked a different route and went that way and there was a and I was surrounded with rattlesnakes. It's, it's quite obvious because I think it's the only one that has that as part of the photograph that belongs to the angels that they have made across the world. Well, like this. Yeah. Warren would always attend the Northern Pacific Railway Historical Association conventions each year. And uh, on swap meet day, he would always have a table where he sold his photos. And of course, I always bought some photos while I was there. And the interesting thing about uh, Warren's photos, at least if you bought them from him, uh, they always had uh, a 
big description back here of what's going on. You'd usually have not just the crew members' names and the location, but uh, you'd also have anything peculiar going on that day. Here's a picture of two big Challenger engines uh, coming into Livingston, Montana from the east, uh, one pushing the other. And here he's got written that the 510's engineer, which 510 was the uh, second locomotive, engineer Elmer Easley told me that he, in the 510, shoved George Olmsted in the front 5108 all the way from Laurel, 100 miles, to Livingston. George was a real slowpoke and nothing hurried him. So uh, two Z6 is used on this train only to balance power. So we'll take a look at these photos and I'll uh, put them up very quickly, but you can hit the pause button if you'd like to take a closer look at the photo or read the uh, entirety of what's on the back. Warren lived to be 102 years old. Uh, my video interview of Warren that accompanies this uh, video was taken when he was 84 years old at night after a tiring day uh, at a NPRHA convention in 1998. While he speaks in his own words, it really doesn't show Warren's trademark wit and wisdom. And I have to be, uh, it's rather sad and apologetic that we didn't get that in this interview, but very understandable. Around that time, however, I did get a, uh, some video of the typically energetic Warren holding court in Mike Gilhouse's former NP Lewis and Clark lounge car in Spokane. So let's, let's listen to that. <laughs> well, so we'll I, think, I think what a you, you household pet. Uh, couldn't hit that damn switch. <laughs> <like it. laughs> Them guys that used to cut it meant, yeah. meant business. Yeah, we had they were serious. We're Ain't nobody in here alive. Get the hell out of here. This is just for the wake. It's a wake for the dead. It's a wake for the dead in here. <laughs> you weren't here at six o'clock, and you missed I sure it. as hell wasn't. I'm over Judith Gap. Yeah, yeah. And I come over them hills uh, from Big Timber, between Harlow and Big Timber. And I slowed down. I was only going about 45 at the most. And that son of a bitch went over a little rise and went down. And she started for that side, and I never touched nothing. I just sit there frozen. <laughs> and she swapped ends and went over 14 foot banks right through the right of way fence. That's where it stopped. <laughs> no problems. Pulled her back on the. The old wrecker foreman says, hey, we, that's all we got to do is get a hold of her someplace. He says, these cars, you can pull on them. <laughs> that's true. I don't consider my own collection of photos to really reflect Warren McGee's best work. Uh, if one wanted to find Warren's best photos, they would uh, perhaps look in this book. It's entitled The Northern Pacific Railway of McGee and Nixon by Dick Green. Uh, Nixon being Ron Nixon, who was mentioned earlier by Jim Fredrickson. Uh, oddly enough, the, my, two of my favorite photos in this book were not taken by either McGee or uh, Ron Nixon. They were taken by somebody uncredited. They're the top two photos here uh, that show a very young Warren McGee uh, for the first time being conductor on a train with his father, Howard McGee, as the engineer. A lot of people think of a uh, of, uh, conductor as someone who walks the aisles on a train and just punches the tickets. At least in uh, How uh, Warren McGee's time, the conductor was actually the most important person on the train and had the most authority of anyone. So uh, the engineer, in this case Warren's dad, was reporting to him, who was probably a, a very a uh, young conductor at that time, which must have been a pretty interesting uh, situation for Warren. I'm sure he enjoyed that. Uh, down at the, the bottom photo here shows uh, Warren McGee on the far left as a young uh, conductor. Warren and his wife Bernice were so full of hospitality. I mean, the, anybody that showed up in, in Livingston was welcome to stay at their house and eat at their dinner table and, and use Warren's Model A, while he was out on the road, he was a conductor um, running from Livingston to Laurel or sometimes Livingston to Helena. And while, while he was gone, you could take his Model, Model A and go chasing trains. And uh, Warren McGee, there's, there's just uh, no one else like him. I've never seen anybody that had such intense interest and had to know the reason for everything. Now, Warren has definite opinions and is very good at expressing them and and he's not bashful to say the least 
he'll say what he thinks. At what point did you realize that uh, your photos weren't just a hobby for you, but they were important to uh, the rest of the world as well? I don't think I ever did come uh, into that. Uh, I, I, I don't think I ever uh, thought they were of great significance uh, historically until uh, uh, the last 10 years, something like that. They meant a great deal to me and and to p people who liked my kind of pictures, but uh, well, I wasn't overwhelmed by people coming around wanting to write books about anything like that. You've heard me mention NPRHA a few times during this video, and that's the Northern Pacific Railway Historical Association, which publishes uh, this magazine, The Main Streeter, four times a year. As you can see, this one uh, has some, an article from A to Z with Warren McGee in it. Uh, if you want to subscribe to this publication, you would go to nphra.org on the internet and click on Company Store and join the group, and uh, then they automatically send you the magazine and uh, news about their uh, annual convention. This year in 2020, it's going to be in Missoula, Montana in mid-September. I'm not a, I'm a member of the association, but I'm not an officer, ever been an officer, don't have any financial uh, dealings with them. I get nothing out of it. But I just always think it's good to support NPRHA and anything to do with uh, Northern Pacific Railroad history.